Could you tell us a bit about your latest book? Beaky Malone. Well, the Beaky Malone series is about a boy called Dylan Malone who has a big nose and has the nickname Beaky. He's actually based on me. I have a big squint nose like he does after I attempted to do a backflip when I was 12 and knocked myself unconscious. Um, but it's, uh, Beaky is a compulsive liar. He's the world's greatest liar. He lies constantly, makes up stories about his big sister, about his friends, about his parents. Um, and one day his sister puts him in this machine they come across in a shop which claims to be the world's only truth-telling machine. And when he emerges, he's unable to tell a single lie. Not only that, he has to tell the truth all the time. Um, and it's about how telling the truth is not always the best thing to do. We say honesty is the best policy, but as Beaky discovers, that is often not the case. What's your favorite thing about writing Beaky Malone? My favorite thing about writing Beaky Malone, Beaky is more than any other character I've written. Beaky is based on me when I was younger. Beaky has a big sister and fights with his big sister the same way I used to fight with my big sister. Um, the stories Beaky tells are similar to the kind of stuff I would make up when I was younger. I was a complete fantasist when I was younger, made up all kinds of stuff. Still do, it's now my job, so that's a bonus. Um, so I think that's why I really enjoy writing Beaky, because it's about, well, Beaky is about what I was like when I was younger, and Beaky's dad um, is like what I am now. Beaky's dad writes radio jingles and spends all day in the house by himself and I write books and spend all day in the house by myself and, and you can see over the course of the series it becomes obvious that Beaky's dad is going slowly insane and that's kind of how it feels having been writing books for the last kind of 10 years sitting in rooms by myself that I start to feel these characters have kind of come to life and um, so yeah I see a lot of myself in the Beaky Malone characters. What is important when you're trying to write a character that stays funny? A character that stays with you. I think it's just about, it's about being kind of multifaceted. I think it's, you can write a funny character, but a funny character in and of itself is not necessarily a memorable character. I think you have to get deeper than that and find out what actually makes that character tick. So before I start writing, I get a little, um, a sheet and I write down everything I know about that character. I know what they like, what they don't like, their favorite music, their favorite food everything I can think of about that character, the worst thing that's ever happened to them, the most embarrassing thing. And because I know that, even if none of it makes its way into the story, because I know it, when I write the character, I have a better understanding of how that character will react to situations. And the character comes across as more, um, as more kind of fully formed, I think, just by the fact that I know that information in advance. Does that make sense? Excellent. What advice do you have for young people that want to start writing comedy? writing comedy in particular, right. Um, I think the most important bit of advice, you know, there's that whole thing of read lots and write lots and that that's good advice anytime, but just living life a bit and just doing things and doing things which are exciting and having fun. And you know, you can't, you can't write about comedy unless you've laughed a lot, you know, so, so it's, it's telling bad jokes and it's, it's going to comedy events and it's listening to your friends, telling their bad jokes and just having as much fun as possible. And then, you know, that, that feeling of fun, that understanding of fun, can then go into the books. And that applies to, you know, if you're writing scary books, then go on a roller coaster, do a bungee jump, do something scary, and know what fear feels like. So to write funny, you have to, you have, to have experienced funny stuff. What's next for Beaky Malone and for you? Next for Beaky Malone, I have just finished the fourth Beaky Malone book, uh, and it's arguably my favorite of the lot. We don't actually have a title for it yet, though. I haven't decided on the title. But um, he, uh, before going in the truth telling machine, he wrote a TV, a talented pets TV show, telling them that his dog could ride a bike. And now they have come to his town to see the dog riding a bike on live television. So he has to try and teach his dog to ride a bike. Um, and when that doesn't work, he has to come up with a plan B while still being unable to lie about it. So um, it's, it's a more complicated plot than the other ones, but I think it's funnier as a result. So uh, that's next for Beaky. Next for me, coming out on uh, the 7th of September, is a series called Spectre Collectors, which is about a boy who gets recruited to an ancient ghost hunting organization and, um, and has to try and stop the world being overrun by ghosts, but in a funny way, because it's a comedy as well. So supernatural comedy is what's next. Thank you very much for speaking with us.